back again. Now, the next step is actually to smooth all of this here on the inside. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but it's very lumpy. Doink, 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 like that. So what I do is I take something like my brass tube and I just try to roll this surface smooth. Because if you don't do this, then where the quill meets the sides of the feather, you get kind of a lumpy line. Now, some of that can't be avoided, but if you do this, you, you start to minimize that. And that's actually not too bad. Sometimes you can take the tool and just stroke up and down lightly. And that starts to close those gaps as well. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm just going to live with that. Now I'm going to cut it in half. Get a ruler out. Cut it in half. Now, I'm going to prepare the quill at this point, okay? But I need one piece of that light one. One little piece of that light one. This is good. And this becomes the very center of the feather at the top of the quill. Okay, so now I've got my two sides, one with the additional piece. All right, this is my quill color, and it seems a little bit stiffer, but it warms up nicely, quickly. So I'm going to go with it. I've rolled it into a cylinder, and I'm going to wrap it with black that I've rolled through setting number six on my pasta machine. Now, ideally, this black should probably be the same thickness as the black and the feather, like, oops, right there. I was like, where's my feather? But there's no way for me to actually get there. Um, because this has been greatly reduced. It started out as six. It got greatly reduced. This is starting out at six. It will also be greatly reduced. But I can't with any, 
I can't be certain that the black lines will be exactly the same. All right, I'll take that, set that aside. All right, now the quill, what I'm gonna do with the quill is just flatten it. To move this further out and roll it through the pasta machine. Uh, and this is enough quill for several feathers. Back to the thickest setting of the pasta machine. I'm going to put this edge on the pasta machine and roll it through. Wow, what is all that? You know what it is? The uh, quill color is actually stiffer than the black. So when I forced it through that opening that was thin, too thin for the slab, uh, that's what happened. It kind of broke in spots. Now, it's not very important for this particular application, so we're just going to go with it. But that's something to bear in mind. I just decided that I would just roll it through even though I knew it was too thick. And I could have avoided those little spots if I had rolled it through, let's say, one, and then two, and three, and worked my way. What am I talking about? I'm only doing setting one. Sorry, it's very early in the morning. What I could have done was actually, when it was a bullseye and I was flattening it, I should have flattened it further. So it was closer to setting number one. Forgive me. All right, so now I'm going to take the one with the extra center piece. And this is what the quill looks like at this point. You see, I'm going to take and line up the edge of the quill to the base of that extra piece. It is, by the way, very early in the morning. I was never an early riser, but I am now. Okay, good deal. But I see a little issue here. I'm going to take this off because the black at the tip was pushing the quill color down. See, I lined up the clay, but the quill itself was then lining up to this, to another part of the feather. And what I really want is I want that quill to line up to the base of that extra piece. That's better. Let's take the other half, align it, both sides. This side got so much smaller. I'm going to stretch it out. Isn't that funny? It really did get smaller. Smaller. Well, this stuff happens. And maybe it's not bad because the two sides will look a little more different. All right. 
So that, in a nutshell, is the feather. And I like it. Now, we'll continue packing. But before we do that, we're going to take and trim some of this excess packed clay away. You just stand it up and very carefully cut it away. It's not a race, so you don't have to go fast. As a matter of fact, if you go slow, you cut with greater accuracy. If you have pieces like this, put them somewhere so they don't get all mixed in with your nice clay. Because they will. We saw that. So I'll cut from both sides. Okay, so let's pack the base of the feather. I used to pack with a lot more sheets than I do now. I pack a lot of my canes with wedges, with wedgies. because it's faster and it actually gives me a better result. So I'm gonna take my wedgie and insert it right in and push it up. I'd like the stem to curve a bit. So let me just pull the outside of the wedge toward me. like so. It's not curving very much. I think I can make it curve more. if I'm going to leave this, the uh, quill this long. I may shorten it. All right, so let's take another wedge and fill this space. Wrong shape. So I think I'm just going to take a bigger wedge and I'm going to cut some of this away. So I'll just create the curve by first cutting some and trying to create the proper curve by removing some of the clay in the wedge. That 
that's not bad. But I think I can make a curve more. Let me just roll it. shorten the quill. Now these blacks are different. You might be able to detect that. I don't really mind so much because I'm hoping it doesn't make much difference. Okay, so there is the feather. Now I'm going to take this tip and I'm going to push it down a little farther. And I think the best way to do that is actually to cut a bit of this out. Create space and then push it down. Now let's pull this tip up. By cutting a bit out and creating a space, to move the clay. Cut along there. So even though I didn't pack it that way, I can still make adjustments by removing clay in some spots, maybe even adding. For instance, if I want this to go down, then I will simply pull it to where I want it to be. And it seems to have gone way back in there. So it's going to be different on this side. OK, 
can't really do much about it. That's okay. Make a steeper angle and feed it in. All right, so I'm going to continue packing. And, um, you know, it's the packing process. I'm not going to make you watch because you saw how I pack these finer areas. So it's just a matter of building around and making a square. Okay, I'll be back.